man has turned to the sea into the life above and below it for adventure. Not content with surface thrills, man also invades the depths equipped with a diving hat, weight boots, dive suit, endless courage and curiosity as he moves into this airless fluid world. Join us as we explore the depths on this episode of Diving Into the Past. Hello and welcome to another episode of Diving Into the Past, presented by Kirby Morgan Dive Systems and the Historical Diving Society USA. Firstly, I'd like to give a special welcome to my friend Antonio Badeas and his team and our friends at HDS Spain, who are now dubbing these videos in Spanish. And these are available on the HDS Spain website. Gracias, amigos. Today, we're going to look at this Kirby Morgan Corporation helium recirculator, built on a Japanese Yokohama shell and part of the company's museum collection. In episode six, I showed one of the first four helium recirculators built jointly by Bob Kirby and Bev Morgan in late 1965. These four helmets were the first Bob and Bev built together, but they were not yet partners. As such, these four helmets had the R. Kirby manufacturer's plaque on the breastplate. The Kirby Morgan partnership was formed around the time these four helmets were completed. A new Kirby Morgan manufacturer's plaque shown here would be used on the traditional copper and brass diving helmets that the partnership produced from then on. Bob Kirby recalled that at the start of the partnership, he and Bev made recirculators on bonnet shells manufactured by both Yokohama of Japan and Hummel Products of Santa Barbara. Kirby had designed the distinctive Hummel bonnets whose shape resembled an inverted garlic clove. And it was these he used for the four divecom recirculators that we showed you in episodes five and six. However, both Bob and Bev were keenly aware of the rapid changes taking place around them in diving as Santa Barbara became a hub of deep water diving activity. They knew that the copper and brass helmets that Bob had been making would soon be old technology and that lightweight fiberglass masks and helmets were the future. This lightweight equipment became known as swim gear and the traditional copper and brass equipment as heavy gear. Bev had already had success in building lightweight fiberglass masks by using the skills he had learned forming surfboards. Their transition into the new era of lightweight swimming gear was accelerated when Dan Wilson of General Offshore Divers sent one of Bob's helium recirculators to Yokohama of Japan. Wilson wanted to see if Yokohama could manufacture the helmet at a cheaper price than Bob had been charging him, and it turned out that they could. Yokohama went into production, making exact replicas of Bob Kirby's helium recirculator, which had the inverted garlic clove bonnet as spun by Hummel products. The Yokohama price was low enough that Bob and Bev decided to stop manufacturing the helium recirculators and just order them directly from Yokohama to fulfill any orders that they got. Once the helmets arrived from Japan, all they had to do was put the Kirby Morgan plaque on the breastplate. The helmet we show here is one of these. As mentioned before, all bonnets manufactured by Yokohama were hand-formed and the metalsmith's hammer marks, known as planishing, can be seen on the helmet shell. When these helmets were retired from service, some owners buffed out the planishing marks so that the bonnet shell had a smooth finish. However, as the bonnets were hand-formed, the bracing line around the circumference of the Yokohama bonnet makes them distinct from any American-made bonnet. With Yokohama basically manufacturing helium recirculators for them, Bob and Bev were now free to start developing the series of lightweight swim gear masks and helmets that are now the world standard. 